Hello. Today I wanted to do a quick overview of the current state of D365 user licensing, how you go about determining the licensing and what you can uh, potentially do to help lower your licensing costs. As a quick introduction, uh, my name is Alex Meyer. I'm the director of Microsoft Cloud Development at FastPath. My contact information is there in the middle and my background information is listed there at the bottom uh, for you to review. So jumping in, if we want to take a look at where Microsoft currently started with licensing of D365, this would be the licensing model of pre-October 2019. Uh, you can see you have a number of different options when you go through uh, this licensing plan. Uh, you have the D365 license plan that would cover both customer engagement and uh, unified ops. You could buy just the customer engagement plan to get all of the uh, customer engagement side or the unified ops plan to get all of the unified ops side. And then you can actually go in and purchase those individually uh, modules as well. Uh, you can also have your team member activity at the bottom um, uh, as those licenses uh, were determined there as well. So that was where we were pre-October 2019. So where did we move to in October 2019? So in that case, Microsoft released a new licensing model that broke out customer engagement and uh, unified ops or finance operations, retail and talent into these separate uh, very modularized areas, right? So you don't have the ability to purchase one licensing plan across both anymore. You have to actually go in and purchase individual modules within the different uh, offerings that Microsoft uh, has. Um, and so you weren't able to buy, for example, a unified ops plan, right? You'd have to actually go in and buy a finance, a supply chain management, a retail or a talent plan. Uh, and then you still had your team member uh, and activity licenses underneath those as well. So how does Microsoft actually determine the licensing uh, from this? So there are really two licensing mechanisms that are currently in place uh, for Microsoft. There's the entry point based licensing, which if you've used AX 2012 or earlier versions of AX, uh, that, li that licensing uh, model is already in place. And then you have your privilege based licensing. And your privilege based licensing actually breaks out your operations or the, or the enterprise level licensing into the respective areas. So if we take a look at each of these, uh, for the entry point based licensing, there are really three licensing types. There's the operations, which is your highest level license, and then you have your activity and your team member underneath the, underneath that. Um, this is uh, listed in a hierarchy based structure with operations being at the top and team members being at the bottom, and each has their own respective uh, pricing as well. Uh, so entry point based licensing is where we were uh, previously in X2012, um, and it still exists here in FNO. Uh, but along with that, now we've added in this privilege-based licensing, which basically takes your operations level license and breaks it into those different licensing SKUs. So it break it out into finance, supply chain management, commerce, and project operations, right? So you're not going to be able to just buy an operations level license anymore, right? You'd actually have to buy the individual modules uh, that are actually ap uh, uh, applicable to your user. Um, if a user requires multiple licenses, so for example, if they go uh, and they need a finance and a supply chain management license, right, uh, you have this idea of having a base and an attached license. So one of those licenses become a base and the other one would be an attached and you can attach as many licenses to a user as they are required to have. Um, and a user must have a base license first before attaching any other licenses. So uh, let's take a little bit deeper dive into each of these different licensing models and how they actually work. So if we start with the entry point based licensing, in this case, it's actually based on your access to the entry points or menu items in the system. So your menu items displays outputs and actions. Uh, if you go and look at those in the AOT, they have two different parameters on them. Uh, one being the maintain user license, one being the view user license. And each of these is going to have a corresponding license attached to it. Um, and so at this point, <clears throat> based on the licensing that the user has to that entry point would dictate the license they're required to have. So if the user has create, update, or delete access to the menu item, they're going to be required to have whatever license is in the maintain user license. If the uh, user only has uh, read access to this menu item, they're only going to be required to have what's in the view user license. Right? So when Microsoft is going through and determining the license requirements, it's looking at all the different entry points that the user has access to looking at all the view and maintained user license uh, requirements that the user would have, and then determining uh, based on that access what uh, license that user is going to be required to have uh, based on all of their access. 
and it only takes one access at a higher license level for the user or role to require that higher level license. So for example, if a user has 100 accesses um, at an activity level and they only have one access at an enterprise or operations level, right? that's going to uh, make that user require to have an operations level license. So that's the entry point based side. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the privilege based side now, uh, how this actually works is this works in conjunction with the uh, entry point based licensing. And uh, in this case, Microsoft has designated certain privileges to require a particular license type. So these associations uh, for between the privilege and the license uh, aren't available in any report uh, within natively within D365. Uh, but you can actually get there um, if you have access to the back end in the table called the Licensing Service Planes Privilege Table. And if you dig into that, you can actually get the privilege to uh, license uh, associations there. Uh, to add on another uh, layer to this, there's also a parameter called is unique on that uh, association. And uh, that basically determines whether or not the user would be required to have that particular license if they are assigned that privilege based on the user to role to duty the privilege uh, hierarchy structure, right? So in this case, Microsoft is looking across all the privileges that the user is assigned uh, based on their current access and then determining which privileges are assigned and therefore what licenses are required keeping in mind that is unique. So um, if the is unique is one, then the user is required to have that license in a base and an attached scenario. If the is unique is zero, then any license would suffice, All right? So any of the licenses, any of the base licenses uh, would be, um, uh, would meet the requirements. And this is how Microsoft handles custom roles, duties, and privileges, right? So your custom role duty or, duty or privilege may require an operations level license, but because Microsoft obviously doesn't have uh, the information about that is to designate which license it would be required to have. They just say you need to have any uh, of the base licenses assigned to that user. And so if you go ahead and look at this, again, we've talked about that base and an attached uh, scenario or the uh, associations that you can have. Uh, and so there are only certain base and attached combinations you can actually have in the system that are valid to Microsoft. And so within their licensing guide, again, uh, if we go in and look, uh, we're able to find a table that actually shows you the uh, base and attached scenarios that are actually valid within your uh, environment. So how do we bring these uh, two methodologies together, right? How do we actually bring together the entry point and the privilege-based licensing? And so in this case, I've put together a uh, decision tree diagram in Visio to kind of show what the uh, process looks like. Um, and there'll be links to this uh, on the YouTube video here as well uh, if you wanna get the uh, full version of this. But the idea is that uh, we have to break this down uh, into a couple different, uh, obviously different areas that we need to make a decision on whether or not uh, this particular uh, user meets these requirements. First thing we have to do is actually figure out if the user, uh, the menu item access that the user has and determine if it's at the operations level. If it's not, then that user is gonna require an activity or team member license, right? The entry point based licensing kicks in and the privilege based licensing is not applicable in that case. But if the user is assigned a menu item that would require a, an operations level license, then we have to see are any of the privileges that the user's assigned actually ones that Microsoft has designated to require one of those license queues. Um, if it's not, then the user would require any base license uh, to actually uh, meet the requirements. If one of those privileges is one designated by Microsoft, then we need to see if that privilege is set to as is unique if true. Um, if it's not, then again, any base license would be applicable in that case. If it is set to true, then that user would require that license in either a base or an attach uh, scenario. All right, so that's kind of the uh, overview of how these two licensing models work together. So uh, if we take this and actually look to see where there's reporting on this within native uh, FNO, uh, one of the uh, biggest areas, I guess, that uh, you can find reporting is in the uh, view permissions area within the security configuration page. Uh, so if you go to system admin, security configuration, uh, and then select a role to be your privilege and select view permissions, right, you get that breakdown of the access that that role to your privilege has and it will actually designate in the upper left hand corner the license that would be required for the overall role duty or privilege and then it'll actually on the way right hand column will actually go through uh, line by line and show you um, the license that's required for each access 
One thing to note here is that if this is showing that license column is showing a team member or activity, right, that is referencing the context or resource or the menu item in this case that that uh, role has access to. If you see finance, supply chain management, uh, commerce, uh, any of the other license SKUs, right, that is actually referencing the privilege that that user is being assigned, right, because that licensing is done at the privilege level and not at the menu item level, right. So you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at this type of report. Uh, the other thing, other report that we uh, have in the system is the user license estimator report, right? You can find this in sysadmin inquiries, license reports, and user license estimator. Uh, historically, this has had some issues uh, between PU31 and PU36. Uh, so if you're um, coming from an older version, uh, you want to make sure to keep those in mind. And there, um, basically, this would show you for the particular user what license is going to be required. Um, to uh, for that particular user. Uh, the current licenses as of 10.0.21 are finance, supply chain management, commerce, and project operations. All right, uh, obviously those may change uh, in future versions as well. So if you look at what are the current gaps with the user license estimator report as well as other licensing reports within Microsoft, um, one of the big ones is if you try to modify out-of-the-box security, right, removing or adding access from the out-of-the-box security will uh, uh, throw the uh, static listing of the privilege uh, to license associations um, out of whack, right? They won't um, actually match up anymore. So um, you want to keep that in mind. The other one is that there aren't any licensing reports in FNO that actually take into account the deny permissions. Um, and what I mean by this is that if you deny a part of an object, for example, if you uh, grant full permission to a menu item and then deny the delete update and uh, create permissions, um, that scenario is not covered within any of the license reports within Microsoft. Um, and it doesn't show why a particular user requires a license, right? So it doesn't actually show you, well, this user is assigned to this role and this duty and this privilege in this object, and therefore they require this license. They just kind of show you the license requirements. And so it doesn't give you the ability to go in and potentially remove access from a user or role that would potentially help you save licensing costs. Um, it also doesn't show you the, the valid basin and attach scenarios, right? So the, you may, uh, there may be uh, times when you could uh, save licensing costs in that way by uh, configuring your licenses in a particular way. Uh, and Microsoft just says they require these licenses and kind of leaves it up to the end user to actually uh, show the basin and attach uh, or to set those up. And then it doesn't actually give you an overview of the number of licenses of each type required. So you don't know how many base attached license or base licenses to buy for each of the different licensing types and how many attached licenses, right? Again, that's up to the end user to kind of um, determine. So if we look at this from a manual reporting side, right? How would you actually go through if you were gonna go in and, and do this type of reporting yourself? How would you actually go in and, and do this? Um, you first need to determine the user access to each entry point, right? So you need to go and get the user to object uh, assignments and get the access type and then um, determine the highest level of access uh, of license required based on that user's access to the objects, right? So we'd have to go through and look at those view and uh, maintain uh, user license uh, parameters and determine what the highest level of license is. And then we need to determine if the user's uh, uh, licenses at an operations level and at that point then we'd have to look at the privileges that the users assigned and then reference the data from the licensing service plan, plans privilege table to determine the license required uh, that users required to have right and that's how we could build this out uh, if we need to get that more detailed information to see why a particular user um, is requiring those licenses uh, there are automated solutions for this uh, I actually am the lead developer on one of these um, so the fast path licensing reports that we have both from a uh, where you're currently at as well as while you're designing your security, right? Uh, we do both uh, sides of this. Um, and so if you're looking for a more automated solution where you wouldn't have to actually go in and do these manually, right? Um, we can, uh, you should absolutely, absolutely reach out. Uh, we'd be happy to assist with that. And there'll be links again um, to, uh, to take a look at the solutions that we offer. Um, there are a number of different resources uh, that we have a lot of these or uh, all of these are free. Um, there's uh, my blog series on the user licensing uh, within FNO that I kind of step through each uh, release that Microsoft has and, and determine if there's anything different. 
uh, from a licensing standpoint and, and kind of write about those. Um, there's a lease privilege uh, security white, pa white paper that I wrote on how to actually go up and set up lease privilege security if you're looking to minimize your licensing costs. Um, and then there's uh, the audit uh, security audit field manual and my blog as well, um, which is, are both uh, educational resources that I came up with uh, or and co-authored on for, for the book perspective um, to, to just help bring additional resources to the community. And then there's other uh, D365 resources from FastPath. So at this point, if you have any questions, you can feel free uh, to reach out to me uh, uh, via YouTube or my blog. Um, uh, my contact information is here as well. Uh, so hopefully this kind of gives you an overview of where we're currently at with user licensing within FNO uh, and uh, you know, how you can actually go through and determine uh, the more detailed information that you would need uh, to actually help you reduce your licensing costs for Microsoft. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.